I'll introduce myself really quickly. My name is Kelly and I'm the pre-law advisor here at the UC Berkeley Career Center. And we have two recent alums, Scott and Coco, who are currently in law school and they're also international students. And I've asked them to share a little bit of insight and talk about their experiences in law school so far. So I'll give them a chance to introduce themselves in just a sec, but I wanted to let you know the event structure. Um, we're gonna do about 15 to 20 minutes of introductions and panel questions and then 20 minutes for four questions um, from all of you. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we'll start with Scott and then go to Coco. Can you introduce and tell us briefly about what you majored in during at Cal and anything else that you want students to know here today? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks Kelly and Jing for having me here today. Uh, my name is Scott Wang or Xian Tao Wang. Uh, and I graduated from Berkeley uh, last year in 2021, where I studied sociology and data science. And currently, I'm a first year student at Harvard Law School. Hi, everyone. My name is Coco, also an international student. Um, I graduated in 2020. I majored in media studies and legal studies back at Berkeley. And now I am a second year student at the University of Pennsylvania Law School. And thanks for the introductions. Tell us a little bit about your law school experience so far. What is something that you enjoy most and what is something you find challenging that you just didn't really expect? Let's go to Coco first. Yeah, sure. Um, I can jump into what I enjoy the most first. Um, I, right now I'm doing um, a legal clinic and it's a, called an Intellectual Property and Technology Clinic where we, you know, have actual clients who are, you know, either inventors or um, like entrepreneurs who are setting up their companies, and then we're kind of helping them protect their intellectual property. And it's a lot of work, but it's honestly the most fun I've ever had since going to law school because, you know, I want to do things and help people, and then kind of see the impact that I'm making. And then this is, I think, one of the only chances in law school that you get to do that. Um, so. It's a lot of work, but I'm enjoying every single minute of it. And then um, it's kind of humbling how much you learn from it as well, because like when everybody, when we got our cases, we were like, okay, let me look into this copyright issue. But that experience tells you, okay, first take 10 steps back and then figure out who your client actually is. So it's like a great learning experience, gives you the satisfaction of wanting to help people. And all around, I just, absolutely love it and can't recommend it enough because I think every law school has that type of opportunity. Um, something I find most challenging, and I hope this is not like an ominous thing for Scott, but for me personally, one all spring was definitely the most challenging time um, of my life really, because um, I think one all spring is a little bit harder than the first semester because um, the first semester you have the excitement of you know, first joining a completely new environment and everything. Um, I think second semester, we got more coursework um, and the excitement is wearing off and you have the stress of looking for internship and then getting a job for 2L summer. And also uh, last year around this time was when like the anti-Asian hate violence um, kind of reached its peak. Um, so that was like an overall depressing time. So. And, and then like, again, the stress of law school kind of looms in the background. So it's not just because of law school, but just like a lot of factors um, adding together um, made it pretty hard. So yeah, that was my experience. Yeah, I definitely totally agree with what Coco has just said. Um, and apparently she's definitely more knowledgeable than me on this issue because she's a 2L, whereas I'm just a 1L. Um, but I do have to say that, yes, uh, 1L is very challenging um, in terms of the coursework, in terms of the transition into this new environment. Uh, so it's definitely a lot of work. Um, but at the same time, I also think that it's very, um, it's very a rewarding experience because you learn new things every day. You talk to your talented classmates, uh, instructors, and all kinds of uh, really, you know, smart people, interlocutors who come to the campus. So that's also very intellectually fulfilling. So I think what really matters is to uh, find some way to um, to try to keep a good mental health. Talk to your parents, talk to your friends, uh, talk to people beyond law school to let them know um, some of the things that you are thinking right now. And uh, yes, coursework is very challenging, a lot of readings, um, but as I just said before, you definitely learn a lot every single day. 
And besides the coursework, uh, you also have the chance um, to, to participate in some extracurricular activities. So in my school, students are not allowed to join clinics in their first year, but there are um, these organizations called student practice organizations, which are basically uh, student run clinics. So for example, last semester, uh, I worked on a project where we uh, helped a nonprofit um, researching on a, a legal issue, more specifically uh, compliance with some data privacy laws. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is that there are a lot of opportunities in law school, and um, I think it's really important to explore, uh, but at the same time, maintain a good balance between study, um, other kinds of work, uh, and your personal life. Thank you both for sharing. It sure sounds like it's a very challenging experience, but yet very intellectually fulfilling. So thanks for sharing your insights on that. Um, I want to go a little bit um, back and wanted to hear about your motivations for pursuing law school, because I do have some students that are maybe on the fence, just starting to consider and weighing, you know, is law school the right path for me? So can you tell us a little bit more about what motivated your decision to go to law school? Let's go with Scott first. Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, at Berkeley, I double majored in sociology and data science. And I think the sort of the intersection between these two fields uh, really helped me develop an interest in the intersection of law and technology. And really, there are, you know, so many of these new issues uh, because of the way technology changes our life. Um, you know, people are talking about these buzzwords like artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, a privacy and now we have this thing called metaverse so there are a lot of uh, new issues coming up um and yeah i think it is definitely important to find a motivation um, um an experience that motivates you to go to law school yeah yeah so i started um I, I went to college major knowing that I want to major in media studies because at the time my interest was being a journalist and because I love, you know, investigative journalism, and I love telling stories and I love uncovering stories and that passion still has not changed. But I think one thing it was through my studies of media studies and I remember I was in this media theory class and each week we would kind of go through a theory about like, oh, what's media's effect on people and then every single week our conclusion is that we're not sure because the theory is not conclusive and that just felt very unsatisfying to me because I I at least as of now I want to you know I want to kind of tangibly be able to do something and see an effect and um, at the same time you know media studies at Berkeley it's very um, politically involved and then um, I got exposed to um, political science and then so I took some classes around in legal studies and I found that area kind of fascinating and um, so I thought about maybe law school could be a way for me um, to move like to as my postgraduate pursuit um, talk to more people about it and then I felt like that's the right fit for my interest and um, what motivates me now and then here I am Awesome. Let's talk a little bit about the application process. Um, what was the application process for you like? When did you start preparing? And what is one piece of advice you'd like to give pre-law students here who are planning on applying soon? Let's go to Coco. Yeah, I was trying to like jog my memory on this and it's been really hard because I might have just suppressed that memory because it's kind of stressful. Um, I think my biggest, uh, when did I start preparing? I think, um, starting my sophomore year, I kind of just um, was reading blog posts here and there to just to get a sense of what law school is like, and then is that right for me? And then I was talking to professors in GSIs here and there to see like what that is like. And I didn't really start preparing, preparing until maybe junior, like second semester of junior year. That's when I seriously started preparing for the LSAT um, because I, Went, because I went through straight through, so you kind of have to apply for law school your first semester, fall semester of senior year. So you kind of have to get everything ready before that. And um, I felt like I ran short on time on the LSAT for sure, because it's a very traumatizing experience. And uh, my advice at the time for people is just like, oh, start early on everything. And um, that advice still doesn't change, but um, 
when I reflect more on it, I think everybody has their own strength and own style when it comes to preparation, especially for a standardized test. But I think it does not hurt for you to think about these things um, early on, even if you know that like, if I just spent a summer completely concentrated on LSAT and I can do well, if you know that about yourself, that is wonderful. Um, and you can like, you can plan that into your schedule. Um, it doesn't hurt to think about it ahead of time. So that's my advice, just like think about the process ahead of time, think about the components that needs to go into it and then kind of have a plan for yourself. Yeah, I agree. Um, Cause you know, different people have their different, you know, life plans. So I think the, the timeline of application kind of depends on like when you want to go to law school. So for me personally, I planned to go straight to law school and I started preparing um, probably around junior year. So I spent the first semester in junior year uh, reading some of these you know, textbooks. And then I spent the second semester of junior year uh, drilling through some of these practice questions, uh, practice exams, and finished the test um, during the summer after the junior year. So, that's what, what that, so that was my timeline. Uh, and I know that at Harvard Law School, there is this junior deferral program where you applied in, February, uh, applied in, in sophomore year, I think and got admitted in junior year. I'm not sure about exactly timeline, but you definitely have to you know, take the exam and, and, and uh, apply early. And you got uh, uh, admitted in the junior year, and then you work for two years um, after graduation. They hold the disposition for you for, for two years. And after two years, you go to law school. Um, but I think currently the mainstream in law school is that uh, people tend to work for you know one or two or a few years before they go to law school so that they have some professional experience. So in that case, you probably don't have to start the application process as early as I was, but I think it is important to do some preparation when you are in college. Um, for, so for, for, for example, when you're in college, it's good, it, it's the best time to build connections with professors, um, to secure letters of recommendation before you graduate, and if possible, um, spend some time studying for LSAT, uh, just you know, check this box before you graduate, because you might not have the time to study for exam once you start to work. So it depends on when you want to go to law school, but I think the general advice um, that I would give, um, which is also something uh, that Coco has mentioned before, is to start early. And if I could add one thing based on what Scott just said, um, he mentioned something about obtaining recommendation letters. Um, I absolutely agree. That's definitely something you need to think about right now if you even are entertaining the idea of going to law school because um, even if you know that you want to go to law school like five years post college, it's very, very advantageous if you start um, thinking about your recommenders now and then ask for recommendation letters now when your professors still remember who you are and then that's when they can write the best letters if you even if you're their star student when you go back five years later they unfortunately will probably not remember you as well so that's again another piece of thing a piece of the puzzle that goes into your preparation Thanks, Coco and Scott. I definitely echo that. And for students here, if you're looking for a place to store your letters, I definitely look into Interfolio. It's a relatively affordable way for you to get those letters stored and then transfer them over to LSAC when you're ready to apply. Uh, for Scott and Coco, I was wondering, because you guys mentioned blogs and textbooks, if you think of any recommendations that you'd like to share with students, can you email those over to me and I can you know, drop them um, in the comment section of this video recording? I'm going to jump to our next question. How did your law school support you with the process of obtaining or extending your visa to attend law school? Let's go to Coco. Um, I think the experience was very seamless. It, it, it was just do whatever is on the website. And then it's the same as getting a visa um, for college and because i still have one year left of my college visa the process is even more simple um even though i kind of transferred um during pen in 2020 during the pandemic there wasn't that big of an issue for me not that i can remember yeah so because of the covid19 
the international travel is pretty li limited. So I don't think it's easy to, you know, go back to the home country and apply for visa. But fortunately, once you are in um, the United States, your legal status is, is maintained not by your visa, but by your I-20. So, so after you, you graduate from uh, college and go to law school, there is this, you know, I-20 transfer process where you need to negotiate sort of talk with both schools and they can you know, manage um, a transfer of your I-20 status from your college to law school. Um, but overall, I think it's a pretty uh, smooth process, but definitely um, try to uh, start early and talk to um, international office advisors um, as soon as possible, once you know where you wanna go. Good to know. I'm going to ask you a little bit about financing your legal education because I do get quite a few students asking about that. Can you tell us about the types of financial aid that is available for international students in law school? What policies and or visa requirements, if any, in this area should students here be aware of? Let's go to Scott. Yes, um, this I think also depends on the school. So as far as I know, most law schools have merit-based scholarship. Um, you know, they look at your uh, past experience, your your GPA, your LSAT score, and determine if they you know give you some money to to attract you to come to their school. But I think Yale, uh, Harvard, and Stanford, these three schools do not offer merit based scholarship. They only have need based scholarship. So uh, after you get in, they ask for your financial information, um, uh, how how many assets you have. And they probably also take into account uh, the assets of your family. And based on that information, they evaluate how much money you need and decide whether they are gonna give you a need-based scholarship. Yeah, that's my knowledge as well. Um, one of the reasons why I, like when I was making my decision, one of the reasons why I chose Penn was because um, a part of it is that I got like a good scholarship from them. And then I'm very fortunate that with the scholarship and with my parents' support, I can, um, you know, go through law school without being too stressed about it. So, um, so I'm not really so sure about the financial aid policies um, at Penn, but I do know that um, some of my friends who are international students are able to do student loans. Um, they may not be a little bit different from uh, the student loans that your American peers uh, take out, but it's available. And also, I'm sure Harvard has that too. Um, it, our, our school has funding for students during the summer, if you're, especially for your one-all summer, if you're pursuing something in the public interest realm, um, they can give you um, funding and then that's, that does not have anything to do with your nationality. And also I know a lot of, there are a lot of um, like fellowships that are sponsored by firms where you can kind of get like a lump sum scholarship of sorts. I know my friends who are international students who have gotten that as well. So I'm, I'm sure um, nationality is not, a, not an obstacle to that either. Thank you for both for sharing. Um, thinking back on your experience as an undergrad student, can you tell us what experiences at Cal best prepared you for law school? Let's go to Coco and then Scott. Yeah, um, I have this philosophy of everything that happened in my past serves a reason. So anything, everything at Cal prepared me for law school. Um, but I think if I were to say two, uh, three things maybe. One is the fact that I I think Cal has really a breadth of subject matters and disciplines and scholars where you can um, talk to and take classes on. And it's really great for me personally to explore what I really want to do or what I'm really passionate about. So everything I did in, in college, like I, I did it for a reason. I liked it for a reason. And it's kind of important later on when you kind of have to explain why you did what you did. Um, it's much easier when it comes from a place of like true passion. That's the first thing. The second thing I can think of is um, I did a senior thesis, honors thesis uh, project um, my, my senior year within the legal studies um, department. And um, I'm not sure, I, I think it exists for every single uh, major, but it's somehow not that well advertised. And um, it's quite a bit of work. So I think uh, students, sometimes students wouldn't like think of doing it. And I only did it because um, some of my mentors or professors really encouraged me to and I was like, okay, I'll do it. And it turns out it was quite 
uh, not only useful, but also very intellectually enriching. And A, you can explore your interests, which is just like a good thing to do in your life. And second, um, it gives you a lot of experience with researching and writing, which is definitely something very useful in law school. And um, it like it adds a great experience to talk about. I cannot tell you how many times I got asked like, oh, like tell me about your thesis. And um, the third thing that kind of comes out of it is just like, I got to know a lot of great people at Cal and then um, I continued to be in touch with them and they still helped me with my questions in law school. So, so yeah, these three things. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely agree with what Coco has just said. Um, Cal is a great school. We have some of the best uh, instru um, scholars teaching and doing re re research here. So definitely take advantage of these resources doing research or working as an RA, TA, and take those good classes. Um, and I think at the same time, really, the, the subject matter taught at Berkeley really uh, helps me to uh, to navigate um, the school, um, the, the the kind of legal education, uh, because on the one hand, uh, the study of law is very doctrinal. Uh, you learn these legal rules, like you know what are the seven elements of adverse possession, etc. But at the same time, uh, the legal education is also very um, sociological. Um, you know there are so many issues that uh, American society is facing today uh, in terms of legal matters. Um, things like First Amendment rights, Second Amendment rights, um, and recently affirmative action uh, and mass incarceration, etc. So um, I think what I learned at Cal really helps me to and prepares me to to have a discussion and understanding of these uh, sociological jurisprudential issues um, that are also um, a very integral part of the legal education. And at the same time, um, definitely tried to use the resources at the Korea Center. I remember when I was applying to law school, I signed up for quite some mock interviews um, with um, the help of uh, Kelly. Um, she's super helpful. So definitely uh, use the resources here as well. Thanks, Scott and Coco. Um, as you look ahead towards graduation, can you tell us what you plan to do with your JD as of now? I know things may change in the future, but right now, what are you envisioning? Coco, let's um, go to you first. Yeah, so this summer I'll be working at a firm in New York City and then hopefully that will be my full-time job after graduation. And um, I do plan on working at a firm for at least a few years um, after law school. And then whatever happens afterwards, we'll just have to see. Um, do I wanna stay in it longer or do I wanna go elsewhere? But um, I don't know yet and I'm, open to exploration and then have my mind changed. So yeah, that's my that's my plan. Yeah, congrats Coco. Yeah, it's, it's great to have a firm job. Yes, um, I, I think yeah, most international students and in fact, most law students uh, eventually go to law firms. Um, so, uh, but in my 1L summer, um, uh, since it's a 1L summer, you know, people tend to explore more uh, in their first summer. So uh, I will be uh, doing some policy research at an international organization in DC, but again, I think most people will eventually go to law firms. Yeah. Awesome. Those sound like really great opportunities. I'm curious to know what offer or excuse me, what obstacles, if any, do you foresee yourself facing in getting employer sponsorship from your top choice employer here in the US if you plan on working here upon graduation, which does sound like. And um, let's go to Scott. Yeah, I think probably Coco is more knowledgeable on this issue as well because uh, she has navigated uh, the, these private uh, employer um, uh, employer recruitment. But yes, um, definitely, uh, as international students, we definitely face more limitations compared to our American classmates. Um, so, for example, I don't think we can work uh, in a government, you know, DOJ. Um, probably you can do clerkship, but you probably won't be paid as an international student. So most students, they go to work at law firms and not all law firms sponsor visa. But I don't think this is a huge issue um, because first of all, a lot of firms, you know, global law firms, big law firms, they still sponsor visa. So it's good to check in with um, the sort of the Korea Center at your law school. They probably have some statistics on which law firms sponsor visas versus which don't. And secondly, um, I've also known quite some uh, upperclassmen at my law school who plan to uh, work in one of their international offices of these global law firms, um, you know, in Shanghai or Hong Kong or other cities. So again, 
I guess, yes, our choice is more limited. We can only go to law firms. Uh, that being said, I don't think it's a huge problem because there are a lot of firm uh, options available. Yeah, I second everything Scott just said. Um, it, I, I, I think that it may not be as um, restrictive as we imagine it to be. Um, yes, I think as international student, we cannot clerk. Um, we cannot do clerkship on a federal level. We may be able to do state court clerkships, but I'm not really sure. Um, I, I I know someone who um, is working at some department in the government in the federal government, which typically does not take international student, but somehow he got in and then he's working there now. Just like I don't know what happened, but um, so it's possible. And um, in terms of for myself, um, I like Scott said, uh, most of the top law firms they have no issue and they have a lot of experience sponsoring um, international students. And when I was doing my job search, it was very important to me that um, the, the, the firm that I worked at has a very extensive international footprint, um, not only because, you know, there is a chance I may need to work abroad, but also, you know, the legal issues that interest me are matters that are complex and potentially cross-border and of that nature. Um, so again, I was very fortunate that with you know Penn's reputation and resources and everything, um, the 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 firms I got to interview with at the end, they all kind of check that those boxes and then their policies their policies regarding international students are quite similar. So um, I again, yeah, I'm very, I'm in a very lucky position. And then um, if I and then like uh, as you all know the h1b visa is kind of like a like a lottery if i don't get it i'll just go work abroad and then that would be fine too thank you both for sharing those insights um this is going to be my final question and then we'll see if our students here have any questions um how is your law school preparing you for the job market post-graduation scott you mentioned earlier the career office so i'm thinking like networking opportunities professional development, how are they preparing you? Scott, let's go to you first. Yeah, besides um, besides uh, the Korea Center, um, the kind of services they provide, there are also a ton of networking opportunities, you know, just even for me as a first year um, firms day and other, you know, clerkship opportunities, there are people come to the law school and uh, host these um, panels, information sessions, uh, re re receptions where students can, can, can talk um, to uh, these employers. And there is also uh, recruitment fairs uh, like the on-campus interview or early interview program, depending on how the school names it. But essentially, um, all of these law schools host these uh, on-campus interviews during the summer where students can bid for law firms and other employment opportunities. Uh, and uh, at the same time, I think, you know, being in this community really means that you have a lot of pe people who are similar to you who are also looking for these opportunities. So it's great to talk to your classmates and with, with other people or even your professors uh, who might be able to share uh, this information with you. Yeah, so overall, I think if you go to a law school, um, job is not the greatest concern. Um, I think you will get one. Yeah. yeah, I second what Scott said at the end. Um, one thing our like school administrators tell us is that we are in a very fortunate place where there's enough opportunities to go around. Um, and then like Scott said, we have you know alumni and then we have our career office. And um, one thing I would say is you, I, I didn't realize how important um, your geographic location is when it comes to your law school. Um, for example, a lot of people at Penn go to New York and that's what I want to be. So things are a bit easier for me in that, you know, I, if I want to connect with an attorney at X law firm, I can easily find a pendulum and then um, it, it will be like very easy for me to reach out. Whereas if I want to go to Texas, for example, it may be a little bit harder. Um, so going to a school with alumni network that's like that's tailored to what you want to do is quite important in my opinion um something you might want to think about um and yeah that's that's all i would add um i think scott was very comprehensive yeah thank you and just any on to what coco just said uh really um sometimes these employers they care about quote unquote ties they want people who have some ties to the region so uh, new york is probably the least 
discriminatory market in this in the sense because they assume everybody wants to go to New York City, so they don't require ties. But some other markets like Texas or SoCal probably want to know why you want to practice in the area. Yeah. For our students to know, I'm going to pause here really quickly and launch three quick Zoom questions for our students here because I want to know how you're benefiting from the session and how we can make some improvements. So just take one minute to answer three questions and then we're going to jump to our student Q&A. We have about 50 response, uh, excuse me, 50% of the people here respond. So let's go ahead and give the other folks like 30 more seconds to answer these three quick questions. Awesome, I'm gonna end that. And now I wanna hear from the group here. What questions do you have for Scott and Coco? Feel free to turn off your video, turn on your video, unmute yourself, or if you're more comfortable with just dropping the questions in the chat, we can read them out loud as well. Um, I can go. Hi, Scott and Coco, thank you for that. It was very helpful. Um, I had uh, two questions actually. Um, did you guys do any legal internships prior to law school? And uh, in general, um, what did you do the summer of your junior year in Berkeley? Thank you. I can start because hopefully my answer can be more reassuring. I did nothing related to law before I applied to law school. And in my junior year, I was I was working as a data science intern at some finance firm. So nothing related to law. Um, but I do think that if you because um, it's definitely helpful to have some legal le legal experience because um, you can you know, have a story of why you want to go to law school. And I also know that some of my classmates, they they work as paralegals um, before they apply to law school. Um, and, you know, having that kind of connection to a law firm helps you to first apply to law school and secondly, um, coming back to the firm as associate in the future. So it's definitely helpful, but it's not necessary. Um, and it's not even determinative in my view. Yeah, I agree with Scott said. And then um, I'm not sure what you mean exactly by legal internship, but I did work at a government agency for a couple, for a summer. I worked for a state senator for a semester and my, I, I did research through URAP um, with the, professor at the law Berkeley Law School for about a year and a half and then I think that was really a great experience and I did that for my junior year summer so if that's something you are interested in definitely look up your app and see what opportunities are there and um, something Scott said earlier um, reminded me I'm not sure if Kelly is saving that question for last but if there's one thing I would like to impart on everyone is that be intentional about the reasons why you want to go to law school um, because everybody everybody has one and then some reasons are better than others some people just just think that you know I have no idea what I want to do and I think you know law school is a like a good choice for depending like based on my major in college like a lot of supreme court judges think that way let me tell you um it's fine but it will be much better when you actually know why you want to go to law school and when you do it doesn't matter if you only worked at as, as a data scientist your past life um, as long as you have that reason then law school would happily have people from a more diverse background and the fact that you did not work and and like by doing legal work it makes your story a little bit easier to tell you know i worked at a law firm i enjoyed it i think this is what i want to do and it's believable but again don't let that discourage you and then do what you think you want to do and do what you think 
um, will advance your purpose and what you want to learn. Yeah. All right. What other questions do we have from the group here? Yeah, and just to follow up on what Coco uh, has just said, um, so it's definitely important to be intentional when you're doing some things in, in college. Uh, for example, you might want to you know, do some research related to law. Uh, you might want to you know, um, apply for a job that's related to law. Uh, and at the same time, I think, uh, I think it's also important to really enjoy the, the, uh, the process of, of, of studying in college itself. Um, I think there is a reason why um, there's no you know, law major in college in America. Uh, so I think it's important to enjoy the college and college is more than just a prep school for, 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 for law school. Uh, there are many things that you can explore uh, at Berkeley. Yeah. Yeah, if, sorry, if I can just add one last thing to that is um, when you're applying, how you tie up your story in a beautiful bow and how you tell that story is like a, an art of itself. And then that's why we have the career office. That's why you have us, like the alumni who can help you with that process to tell the story in like a, like a easily comprehensible and beautiful way. Um, but to have the foundation for that, for that good story is do you do things that you want to do, you feel like is important to you. So hopefully that can be like a consolation for you. Ivy, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So first of all, thank you so much for like this wonderful conversation. And then I, my question is actually, I wonder like being an international student in law school, does this identity make your experience anyhow different from like, um, U.S. students. I can I can take this one first. Uh, I'm not sure if you're gearing particularly towards um, the job hunting process or the quote unquote cultural experience in general. So I guess I'll go with both. Um, the when it comes to finding jobs, um, again I think Scott and I are both in a very fortunate position that our schools are great in terms of career resources. So getting a job isn't something we have to be stressed out about. Um, so in that in, in, in that front, and I don't know what your um, aspirations are, but if you like me are planning to work at a firm and a particularly an international firm, then um, I don't think my, uh, the, my identity as an international student hindered me in any way at all. Um, if anything, um, it really helped me in my interviews because you know, I got to have a wonderful conversation with a partner about, you know, their international experience. And then he was pretty impressed by the fact that, you know, I can integrate into a new environment and adapt to it quite easily. So, you know, it, it, it can only help you, in my opinion, on that front. And when it comes to cultural experience, um, this is something I like, I'm thinking about, which is, um, I, I think there is like, it's each law school has the Asian American, Asian and Pacific American Law school, Student Association. And then that's uh, one of the organizations that I'm most involved with. Um, but at least for Penn, um, we don't have an international student association yet. Um, and the, 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 this issue came to me last year too during the an, like anti-Asian violence period where, um, you know, it's a traumatic time. And then we kind of bonded together within a pulsa to kind of talk about that experience. But during that experience, one thing that was glaring to me is that everybody are ta everybody's talking about the Asian American experience, but there's a difference between Asian Americans and Asians in America. And um, especially when it this issue of the pandemic where people are being xenophobic and calling it the China virus, the virus there is a difference um, for people who are actually coming from China, who are not Americans, who don't have the power to vote or, you know, you know, like make any change on a on like within your community. So I feel like there was lacking in that perspective for me. Don't get me wrong, I was extremely grateful to have that community, but I think I think just like international students have our I, 
an identity of our own. And then we have our own anxieties and issues are important to us and uniquely us. And then I feel like sometimes it, especially in law school, when there, when the international student community is much smaller, um, it, it may not be as satisfying at times like that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I'll say on that front. And then, you know, there's, uh, there are a lot of ways to change that because um, my, my friend, my dear friend is the like president of our student government. And we're talking about maybe starting international student um, association. So yeah, hopefully it will get better once you guys get in law school. Yeah, I'll talk more about the cultural part. Um, I think, yes, um, you know, as international students, definitely there is a difference. You know, we are we are not uh, we, we are not American citizens and we might not know as much as or we might have a different standing, a different understanding of the history and uh, some of the sociopolitical context of this nation. And for me, um, I'm a total idiot on the pop culture in America. I know nothing about, you know, these, you know, rappers or pop stars or whatsoever. And uh, yesterday, I didn't know that Super Bowl was hosted yesterday um, until, you know, right before the match. So I think there is definitely uh, that aspect to it, but I don't think it's a huge problem. Um, I'm pretty sure we all have the same, you know, issue in college as well at Berkeley, um, but we're doing fine, right? So it's not a huge problem. And uh, just as Coco mentioned, uh, there are different kinds of affinity groups uh, in law school, including the Asia Pacific uh, Law Students Association, APOSA, and at, at Harvard Law School, there is also uh, organizations for international students and for me, for, for Chinese students in particular. Um, so, and also believe that having this transcultural experience is a strength. It demonstrates your ability to transition to a new environment to study and communicate in a second language, I think this is a huge asset. But I do um, acknowledge that yes, there are you know some some difficulties and and barriers in terms of culture and communication. But um, it is it is fine. Yeah. Yeah. To add on to add on to that, hopefully, what Berkeley, your experience at Berkeley, and your experience in law school can give you is kind of the power and the agency to kind of make it make a change about it if you think there's something lacking, so. Amy, go ahead. Um, hi, Scott and Coco. First of all, thank you so much for attending and providing such great uh, insight. So I guess my question is, uh, as you guys have just mentioned, um, having a why law school reason is probably one of the most important thing during your law school application so i guess um my question is how is the process of you guys like navigating through this reason or like like how basically how do you guys come up with this reason and present them to law school yeah I can I can share um, something about um, you know how to um, how to come up with a reason of going to law school and and more more practically speaking how to write your um, personal statement. So this is probably the one single most um, best advice that I've ever heard. Unfortunately, I, I I learned this after I wrote my personal statement, but I think retrospectively I am glad that I I I did well on that. So this piece of advice um, comes from a podcast hosted by. Um, the admissions, um, the, the Dean of, um, of Admissions at Harvard Law School and Yale Law School. It's some, I forgot the name of, of the podcast, but you can uh, go to look, look it up, um, hosted by those two deans, two deans of admissions. And that piece of advice is that when you are uh, writing a personal statement, definitely write more than one time points, past, present, future. You have to cover at least two, preferably three because you want to show a course of development. What are some of your past experiences um, that impact what you are doing right now? And how does this collective experience um, convinces you that you want to go to law school and what you want to do with your law degree? So instead of writing on a static moment, something that happened in the past, write a long-term story to demonstrate your growth and development. I think that's very helpful. I think that is great advice. 
um, even though I haven't heard that podcast, which I wish I did. Um, to kind of add on to that, sometimes I think it's, I agree that you, that like what you did in the past and and what you're doing at present or what you want to do for the future should align and then point you to the direction of law school. Um, but sometimes it may be really hard for you to see like as some to connect the dots between your past experiences because you have so much to say and then you have so many things that you want to highlight about yourself, which is very fair. So one advice I would have with that is to befriend a lot of smart peers and slash like intelligent mentors, um, tell them about your stories and tell them about your passions and continuously talk to them about it. And then um, when you're, and then as you write, like show them your stories because sometimes like they can easily point something out to you. It's like, huh, I recognize that you've been keep consistently doing this X thing, like with the past, like three of your past experience and you've been doing this one consistent thing but you yourself you may not realize that that's something consistent so um so in order to have that like people need to know your story and hopefully those people are you know your mentors who are going to write recommendation lists for you who know your stories intimately that's I can tell you that is how my personal statement came to be one of my GSIs just sat me down one time and then went through word by word my draft of personal statement and then he points something out to me that kind of changed everything basically so yeah that's like a practical advice talk to people and then um you know you can reach out to me I'll put my email in the chat like I I've read many admission statements for my friends in the past um they, there's like a format to it there's like a trick to it sometimes you may not know until after you you've done it so having another set of eyes is very helpful and I'll be happy to do it yeah, and feel free to re reach out to us. We are here to be a re resource for all of you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you both for being a resource to our students. I'm going to give one final question, which is what is one kind of piece of parting advice you leave, you'd like to leave our students here today? Let's go to Coco first and then Scott. I knew you were saving this for last. So I already said bye. Um, right. Yeah. Be intentional. Yes, be intentional. And then also another thing, I guess, is um, something that you, I've learned, and now that I'm like a twelve and I have people to mentor, um, is that um, we all really want to help because you know we did, we got to where we are today because people that came before us gave us so much help and advice, and then really what we want to do is to kind of pay it forward so you can you should absolutely feel free to reach out it's like totally okay and then um getting help is a skill in and of itself so yeah that's my other advice yeah um i think the one final piece of advice that i can say is to uh, enjoy college um i mean looking back i actually Regret it a lot for not exploring, you know, Berkeley enough. Um, you know, you should go hiking, explore restaurants around the city, because you might not be able to do this in your first year in law school, depending on um, how much work you have. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, try to um, make some good friends with whom you can talk, with whom you can confess, and really um, take the courses that you like. Um, work as a research assistant for professors that you like and maintain long term uh, long term connections with them and always you know try to uh, maintain um, kind of positive mentality and optimism um, and I think this is important because it's not because so, so first of all you know I think being happy has some intrinsic value um, you are a bad person if you're happy uh, but at, at the same time, um, from a sort of utilitarian perspective, um, I have to say that law school is stressful. Um, so you do have to learn how to uh, cope with these pressure, how to maintain a mental health uh, during uh, this period of time. So try to relax, um, enjoy law school, enjoy college, and be a happy person. Yeah. Great pieces of parting advice. Thank you both for taking the time to chat with our students and share your wisdom and insights. So we'll call it a wrap for today. For students here, this event recording did on our YouTube channel in about a week. So if you want to, to share it with a friend who could benefit, from it, please feel free to do so. Thank you both. Have a great day. Thank you for having us. Thank Bye. you.